The vagus nerve, also known as the cranial nerve number 10, is the longest nerve in the body. The vagus nerve connects your brain with many important organs in your body. The gut, which also includes the intestines and the stomach, the heart and the lungs. When we talk about the nervous system, we think of two things. The sympathetic nervous system, also known as the fight and flight, and the parasympathetic nervous system, also known as rest and digest. And your vagus nerve is largely responsible for this rest and digest response. They are both really important as we try to be balanced or reach homeostasis. And then you're able to let it go, self-soothe and get on with your day. That's what we're looking for, a healthy, balanced nervous system. Whether we're dealing with mental health or we need a pick-me-up for the day, it's important to ask ourselves what will help to bring balance to our body and mind today. When we're anxious, often our fight or flight response is working overtime, so we need to be activating our rest and digest and calming our body. By activating our vagus nerve and therefore our rest and digest, we see many benefits. It helps decrease our heart rate that often rises when we're anxious or stressed and lowers our blood pressure. Helps improve our digestion. It has shown to improve our rest and sleeping patterns. It is also shown to help with stress and anxiety by calming the mind and body. So I've put together a complete guide of ways that have been researched and that have shown to activate, reset, and stimulate the vagus nerve that can help in bringing us balance. I've pulled this information from my research and from other experts. And remember, every body is different. So try these different techniques and comment and share in the comments below. Your comments may help someone else. Now this first group, yoga poses and stretches, we'll start with our sphinx pose, moving on our mat, Elbows underneath our shoulders, gazing over one shoulder, eyes looking upward. And what you're going to do. All you're going to do is longer than that. So we're going to do a little bit of movement in your rib.
fine. Now we'll look at massaging different areas of the body. So the first place that we're going to access your vagus nerve in your ear is in the little hollow that is above the ridge that is just above your ear canal. So go ahead and find the little hollow. So you're gonna come towards the ear canal. There's the little ridge above it. And then just gently slide your finger into the hollow that is above that ridge. And what we're gonna do is just make gentle circles there. You can also go back and forth if that's a little easier, but we're just gently massaging this little area here. And really you want to think about moving the skin of your ear in little circles. You're not pressing really hard, grinding away on it. You don't actually need much pressure at all. We're just sliding the skin around in circles, okay? And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the second place where we can access the vagus nerve in your ear and that's at the back of your ear canal. So what you're going to do is find your ear canal and you're just going to press towards the back side, so towards the back of your head. And again, we're just going to make little circles to massage this area. Remembering that really we're just focusing on the skin more than any of the deeper structures here. There's no need to press really hard or use a lot of force. We're just giving sensory information to your nervous system. So extra force is not actually more productive. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side again. most strange. If you take your index finger and your thumb and you make kind of pirates of the Caribbean earrings for yourself by placing your index finger inside your ears and let's massage by making small, gentle, circular motions forward. One, two, three, four, five, and now backwards. Five, four, three, two, one. Very, very gentle. Let's go forward. One, two, three, four, five, and now backwards, five, four, three, two, one. Remember I mentioned before, your vagus nerve is a vagabond. It goes all throughout your thoracic cavity. It also goes up into your neck. It also goes up near your ears, your auricular branch, your ear branch of the vagus nerve goes right up here. And so this massage technique, it doesn't work for everyone, but for some people it works really well. You can also focus solely on that skin behind your ears. This is my favorite, you guys. And I learned this from um, this woman, Christina Warren, that I've been following on Instagram for years. She used to be an acupuncturist and she's always sharing like self-massage techniques. Anyways, you place your fingertips on the skin behind your ears and pull gently up and down. And I personally like to put two fingers in front. I know it seems kind of weird, but two fingers in front and two fingers in back and kind of rub up and down and do it that way. And the thing that's kind of funny is I used to do this without knowing why. And when I found out that it was stimulating my vagus nerve and calming me down, I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty amazed. Our bodies can be so cool sometimes, so. And that is to massage your vagus nerve. Now, the key here is to be gentle. Deeper and harder isn't necessarily better and could potentially cause us harm. So with a light touch, you know, find your trapezius, that muscle above your shoulder, and kind of give it a little bit of a massage. And then run your hands up, both sides of your neck, going up 
toward your hairline, so even behind your ears here. And you may wanna have some lotion or oil so your hands slide more easily, but take time doing this. And you can go up and down your neck really gently. Massage will also help stimulate the vagus nerve. Even foot massages, like foot reflexology, will decrease the fight or flight sympathetic response. And light massage on the carotid sinus, an area located near the right side of your throat, can also stimulate the vagus nerve. This section is for breathing exercises. So there are three sounds in the ohm. Starts with ah. You feel that vibration in your whole body. Ah turns to oo, feeling that vibration in your throat area. Oo turns to mmm, where you feel that vibration in your throat and also your head. So it sounds like this. Aum. When we're thinking specifically of the vagus nerve, we want to linger more on the mmm. So we move straight from the ah to the oo to the mmm. Let's try that again. Nice deep breath in through the nose. Um, maybe try resting your palms on your chest, seeing how that feels one last time. Um, and take a moment to notice how your body feels and when we vibrate the back of your throat, it can massage that vagus nerve and stimulate like the dog and help you to relax. Here's what it looks like. Try to make a low, slow, resonant sound. Looks kind of funny. Sounds kind of funny. If you're embarrassed, just go in the bathroom and close the door. Let me show you one more time. Mm. I'd encourage you to do 10 rounds of Brahmari. Slow, low, oscillating exhales. That will massage your vagus nerve. It also, as an added bonus, helps to release nitric oxide in your paranasal sinuses which is a vasodilator and a bronchodilator, really helpful for your cardiovascular health, but also helps to relax you as well. Is to slow our breath down. I know when we feel anxious, deep breathing is the last thing we wanna do, but I have to mention it because it actually works. Deep breathing decreases our heart rate and stimulates our vagus nerve. And research shows that breathing out for longer than we breathe in is best. And also as a quick add-on, when breathing out, if you make the om noise, yes, just like yoga, you know, om, you are offering your vagus nerve another stimulus. So it's like a two for one. So sitting up nice and tall, let's take a breath in through the nose for four counts. One, two, three, four, and out through the nose for eight, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's repeat that a few times. When we're trying to activate the rest and digest, we want to make our exhale longer. Deep and slow breathing is another way to stimulate your vagus nerve. This will help reduce anxiety and stress. 
Most people take about 10 to 14 breaths per minute. I like you to take about six breaths over the course of a minute. Breathe in nice and deeply from the diaphragm as your stomach should expand outwards. And when you exhale, make it long and slow. Practice this a few minutes every day. Now when you're doing breathing exercises for anxiety, keeping in mind that when you hold that breath, often it exacerbates the fight and flight, which we're trying to reduce. So when you're dealing with anxiety, try not to hold your breath, moving through the nice deep inhale and nice long exhale. Practice is a pranayama practice, a yoga breathing practice. Of all the different things you can do to stimulate your vagus nerve, breathing is probably the most effective and consistent. This practice has a couple of important elements and one of them is the chin lock. In yoga, this is called Jalandhara Bandha and it looks like this. We'll use the chin lock at the top of the breath to hold our breath. And when my chin is locked in towards my chest, it puts pressure on that carotid sheath where my vagus nerve is. And again, will help to massage the vagus nerve. The second thing I'll do is I'll breathe very slowly and deeply. In fact, I will exaggerate my diaphragmatic breathing. Your vagus nerve passes through the opening of the diaphragm. So when you do exaggerated diaphragmatic breathing, it massages your vagus nerve. It can help to relax you as well. So we get kind of a double whammy effect. It's called triangle breathing because we breathe into the count of four, one side of the triangle. We'll lock and hold for four. We'll release and exhale for four on the way down. Let me show you how it works. I'll use a traditional pranayama mudra with my right hand to control my nose and I'll inhale. Close my nose, lock and hold. Lift my chin, exhale. I'll show you one more time, but without talking. So that's triangle breathing. It's four on the way up. Lock and hold Jalandhara Bandha, the chin lock for four, and then exhale for four. I'd encourage you to do 10 rounds and see how you feel. It's a Cold exposure. Cold exposure has been shown to activate the vagus nerve. Exposing yourself to cold on a regular basis lowers the sympathetic fight or flight response and increases the parasympathetic activity through the vagus nerve. So being out in cool temperatures, putting cold water on your face, and taking a short cold shower will activate the parasympathetic system. What happens when you put cold water over your face, specifically your cheeks, and even more importantly on the sides of your neck, is it stimulates something called your mammalian dive reflex. Heart rate slows, heart rate variability increases, and you get a vagus nerve reset. It's very predictable, and it happens pretty well simply with washing your face, but there are better ways to do it. Shows that even more effective is if you take something like a cold compress. This is just a, a cooler from a picnic basket that you might have in your freezer, and you put this cold compress on either side of your neck, alternating 15 seconds on, 15 seconds off. Now, if your ice pack is too cold, obviously wrap it in a towel. The idea is not to ice burn your skin. It's simply to add cold to either side of your neck. Whenever I show people this cold therapy technique, very often they say, oh yeah, I love to take cold showers. Or they say, oh yeah, I love to do cold exposure. And they show me photos of them swimming in a garbage can filled with ice. That's cold exposure. That has very, very interesting health benefits, physiological benefits, but that's a different type of practice. In many cases, full body cold exposure can actually stimulate epinephrine, norepinephrine. That's a stress response. That's not what we're looking for in this particular exercise. Much better to have control, 
much better to focus on that localized region so you don't slip into a stress response. The thing I like about this is you can keep this cold pack in your freezer, even at work, and you can do this really anytime to self-soothe. And here are a few other ways that have been shown to help activate the vagus nerve and keep our body healthy and balanced. If you love to sing or hum or chant, do it. The vagus nerve is connected to the vocal cords and by utilizing these muscles in the back of your throat, you're going to activate it as your body will continue to wind down. Is to sing, gargle, suck on hard candy or chew gum or even hum. Because our vagus nerve runs along the side of your neck and is connected not only to your vocal cords, but also the muscles in the back of your throat. So doing these things can again stimulate our vagus nerve and increase our vagal tone. And start gargling more often as well. And by gargling, this will also activate the vagus nerve and will also aid in calming you down. Let's do this first technique together and follow along with me. We're gonna be working in front of the thymus gland, which is right behind the sternal area right on top of where the clavicle meets the manubrium, right up here. That's one landmark. Right at the nipple levels, that's our other landmark. Right in between these points, right about here, we're going to contact with four fingers on one hand and four fingers on the other hand. Put the fingers together. And you're gonna push straight in nice and firmly. Now you're gonna breathe through the nose. Breathe there, deep breath, and you'll blow out the mouth. You'll do that two or three times. Come on, let's go. Go out of the mouth and let everything relax. Keep pushing firm pressure. One more time. Firm pressure into the nose. Blow it all the way out of the lungs, out of the mouth. The second easy way that we can trigger our vagus nerve is to laugh. <laughs> now I know you can't always trigger a laugh, but years ago my friend Hank Green asked me to laugh without smiling. <laughs> I'm telling you, you just can't do it without cracking up or at least laughing a little because it just feels so wrong and silly. And laughter has been shown to increase our heart rate variability, which is really just a fancy way of saying that it calms us down because heart rate variability is really just the time in between each heartbeat. And we know that anxiety can speed up our heart rate and laughter slows it back down. Third, and honestly, the most surprising to me is to take probiotics. I know these can easily be found in things like yogurt, kombucha, sauerkraut, pickles, kimchi, many other foods. Because our vagus nerve connects to our intestines and stomach, remember earlier I said how it aids in digestion or it's part of that process, having good gut bacteria helps trigger our vagus nerve and helps us feel better. Research conducted by Dr. John Cryan found that when they removed all of the good gut bacteria from mice, their behavior mimicked what we consider symptoms of anxiety and depression. Crazy, right? And then when they added in certain strains of good gut bacteria, they were calm again. And they were even able to repeat these studies in humans. And I'll link the article about it below. But it's pretty amazing. So find some easy ways to add probiotics into your diet and see if that helps increase your vagal tone. Because the vagus nerve is tied into the intestines, by increasing the gut bacteria will help improve the brain function by affecting the vagus nerve. So make sure you're getting those probiotics. Feel tranquil. We know that exercise is not only good for the cardiovascular system, but it increases your brain's growth hormone. This supports the brain's mitochondria. This will also stimulate the vagus nerve, as well as increasing endorphins throughout your body, making you feel relaxed and calm. Meditation is one of my favorite relaxation techniques. This will directly stimulate 
the vagus nerve and increase vagal tone. This will reduce the sympathetic, the fight or flight activity throughout your body, instantly slowing and calming you down.